What's up you guys, it's Deepoy and today I'm going to show you how to create this water text effect in Photoshop. Now if you guys also have any tutorial requests then you can drop them in the comments below. We will surely try to create videos on those as well. Also if you want to keep learning how to create such cool things in Photoshop for free then make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. So without wasting any more time of yours, let's get started. So let's first start by creating a new document. So for that go to file and then select the option new. After that you can set the width and height accordingly or else you can set it as follows. Width as 1920 pixels, height as 1080 pixels and resolution as 300 pixels per inch and then click on create. Now I need a wood background over here so that our water looks proper. So for that go to file and then select the option as place embedded. After that select any wood background of your choice. Now if you want to follow along the tutorial and want to download the same wood background then you already know the drill. Links in the description below. After that select the option as place. And then you need to scale this wood background so that it fits the document properly. So for that I am scaling it up. So once the image fits the document then click on the stick icon in order to place it. After that let me just zoom in again. Now the next step we need to do is type in the text for our water effect. So for that select horizontal type tool and then select any font of your choice. I am selecting Photoshop's default font which is Cooper standard. After that you can set its appropriate size. I am setting it as 125 point. And then set the foreground color to any color of your choice which will be the color of our text. Anyways we won't require this color later on. So I am setting it as black for now and then click on OK. After that click on the document and then type in any text of your choice. After that click on the stick icon in order to place it. Now let's place this text at the center of the document. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on this background layer which will give you the selection of the background layer as well as keep the selection of the text layer active. After that select move tool and then click on align horizontal centers. After that click on align vertical centers. So now as you can see the text has been placed at the center of the document. After that make the text layer active by clicking on it. Now let's convert this text layer into a smart object so that we can later on edit the text non-destructively. So for that right click on the text layer and then select the option as convert to smart object. So now the next thing we need to do is set the fill of this layer to 0% so that our text will be present in a document but entire color of the text will be removed making it kind of look invisible. So let's just set the fill of this layer to 0%. So as you can see as you set the fill to 0% your text becomes kind of invisible but it is still present in a document just that the color of the text has been removed. Now after that click on add layer style option and then select the option as blending options. After that select the inner shadow option and then set the blend mode as multiply, color as black, opacity as 75%, angle as 80 degree. Then make sure you tick this use global light option. After that set the distance as 5 pixels, choke to 0% and then set the size to around 15 pixels. After that I am keeping the quality section to its default. So like I said when we had reduced the fill to 0% that we are not removing the entire text. We are just removing the color of that text and this effect proves that point. So let me just show you the before and after of this inner shadow option. So this was the before and now this is the after. After that select the drop shadow option. After that set the blend mode as multiply, color as black, opacity as 62%, angle as 80 degree, make sure you tick this use global light option, distance as 3 pixels, spread to 0% and then set the size to 5 pixels. After that I am keeping the quality section of this effect as well to default. Now let me just show you the before and after of this drop shadow. So this was the before and now this is the after. Now the next thing we need to do is add some highlights in order to make it look realistic. So for that select the bevel and emboss option. After that set the style as in a bevel, technique as smooth, depth as 100%, direction as up, set the size to 15 pixels, soften as 1 pixel and then set the angle to 80 degree. Make sure you untick this use global light option, set the altitude to 65 degrees. After that for gloss contour we are going to create a custom contour. So for that click on the drop down over here and then select the option as linear contour. After that click on the icon besides the drop down which will give you a pop up in order to edit that contour. After that click on the line which will give you a point and then set the input of that point to around 18% and then set the output of that point to around 88%. After that again click on the line which will give you a second point and then set the input of that second point to around 40% and then set the output to around 53%. After that again click on the line which will give you a third point and then set the input of that point to around 54% and then set the output of that point to around 7%. After that again click on the line which will give you a fourth point and then set the input of that fourth point to around 66% and then set the output to around 77%. 
After that, again click on the line which will give you a fifth point and then set the input of that point to around 95% and then set the output to around 83%. So yeah, that will create a custom counter. After that, click on OK. After that, set the blend mode of the highlight mode to color dodge and then set the color of the highlight mode to white and set its opacity to around 75%. After that, set the blend mode of the shadow mode to multiply, set its color to black and set the opacity to around 5%. Now let me just show you the before and after of this effect. So this was the before and now this is the after. So as you can see it adds highlight around the edges which makes it look more realistic. So after that click on OK. So as you can see the water effect is looking proper but the highlights are looking a bit dull. So let's enhance the highlights a little bit. So for that we will create a duplicate of this smart object layer. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J in order to create a duplicate. So as you can see as you create duplicate it creates a duplicate along with the effects which we had applied. So now as you can see now the highlights are looking proper but as you can see the shadows are looking a bit more. So let's just hide the inner shadow option by clicking on the eye icon of this effect. So now as you can see now it is looking proper and after that let's reduce the opacity of this layer to around 70%. Now let me just show you the before and after of this duplicate layer. So this was the before and now this is the after. Now the next thing we need to do is combine these two text layers into a single group. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on this first text layer. After that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus G in order to combine these two text layers into a single group. And then we need to create a duplicate of this group. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J. After that let's hide our original group by clicking on the icon and then let's rename it to Backup. And then make the duplicate group layer active by clicking on it. After that right click on the duplicate group layer and then select the option as convert to smart object. So now the next thing we will be doing is provide some randomness to the edges of the text. So for that we will require a displacement map which requires us to create a PSD file. Now if you don't want to learn how to create this displacement map then you can download that PSD file from the links in the description below and then directly jump to the next part of this video. So let's start with the creation of our displacement map. So for that go to file and then select the option as new. And then you can set the width and height which we had set earlier and then click on create. And then you need to make sure that your foreground and background color are set to black and white and if it is not then you can press the D key of your keyboard. After that go to filter and then render and then select the option as clouds. Which will give you an image something like this. After that the next step we need to do is make the black more blacker and white more whiter. So for that click on create new fill or adjustment layer icon and then select the option as levels. After that you need to drag the shadow input slider more towards right, somewhere over here and then after that you need to drag the highlight input slider more towards left, somewhere over here. So as you can see this makes the black spots more blacker and white spots more whiter. Now after that you need to save this document in the form of a PSD. So for that go to file and then select the option as save as. After that you can give any name of your choice. I'm giving it as displace one and then click to save. After that click on OK and then you can close this document. Now you can go to our original document after that the next thing we will be doing is applying that PSD file in the form of a displacement map. So for that go to filter and then distort and then select the option as displace. After that set the horizontal scale to 5, vertical scale to 5 as well and then set the displacement map as stretch to fit, undefined areas as repeat as pixels and then click on ok. After that you can select the PSD file which you had just selected and then click on open. So let me just show you the before and after of the displacement map. So for that clicking on the icon. So this was the before and now this is the after. So as you can see it is giving such a realistic touch over here. Now after that let's create some lines and the drops of the water as well. So for that create a new layer by clicking on create new layer icon. After that select lasso tool and then make sure that the add to selection icon has been checked which will allow you to create multiple selection. Now after that you can create the selection as follows. So now our selection is looking proper and after that we need to fill this selection with that of a random color. So for that right click inside of the selection and then select the option as fill. After that select the contents as black and then click on ok. After that press Ctrl or command on Mac plus D in order to deselect the selection. And then let's reduce the fill of this layer to 0%. After that you can expand the backup group which we had just created. And then go to our first original text layer. And then right click on the layer and then select the option as copy layer style. After that minimize this group and then go to our current layer. After that right click on that layer and then select the option as paste layer style. 
So as you can see those lines and drops are looking like as if it was created by water. Now the next step we need to do is add some refraction of the wood inside of the water in order to make it look more realistic. So for that press Ctrl or command on Mac and then click on the icon of the first layer which will give you the selection of the drops and the lines which we had just created. After that we need the selection of the text layer as well. So for that expand the group layer and then press Ctrl or command on Mac plus shift and then click on the icon of that text layer which will add that text layer selection to our current selection. After that let's minimize that backup group. After that scroll at the bottom and now we need to create the duplicate of this wood background as well. So for that right click on the wood background layer and then select the option as duplicate layer. After that click on OK and then click on add layer mask icon which will create a mask with that of a current selection. After that we need to unlink the wood background with that of the mask so for that click on the chain icon between the two and then click on the icon of the wood background which will give it selection. After that select move tool and then you can use your left and the right arrow key of your keyboard in order to move this image in any direction. So now it is looking proper now after that let's give some liquify effect as well so for that go to filter and then select the option as liquify. After that select blow tool. And then you can increase and decrease the size of the brush using the square bracket keys of your keyboard. After that using the blow tool you just need to dab on some random spots where your text was present so let me just do that. So once it looks proper after that click on ok. So now let me just show you the before and after of this liquify effect so for that clicking on the icon. So this was the before. And now this is the after. So yeah that's it guys that's the final image. Hope you guys like this video on how to create this water text effect in Photoshop. Now if you guys like this video then give us a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm in spreading the video. Also you can share it to the ones who might be interested in such videos. And subscribe to the channel for more videos in Photoshop. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.